All right, so if you guys can see around me, right, I'm in a garage. The reason why I'm in a garage, the world can call it mental illness, right? In reality, if I didn't have a family that actually loved me, I wouldn't have a garage to be in, okay? And even then though, like, that's kind of tough. <laughs> I get the garage. But what I'm trying to say, guys, is the reason why I'm in a garage is because I believe in the Bible. Let me explain what that actually means. There's so many Christians out there that call themselves Christians, but then they go and punch in their code to get paid in a week. I don't see how you believe in the Bible when everything is leading up to the point where to work, to earn anything, own anything, to buy anything will be confirmation and the blessing, we could say, of the Antichrist. So unless you are covered by the Antichrist, right, just like how Christians are covered by the blood of Christ, then you will get money. You will get your 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 rights, right? For example, we saw it in 2021. I think it was 2020, maybe. Yeah. People started losing their jobs. Very early 2020. Many people didn't even care to realize, okay, let me look deeper into what the Bible has to say about this. Let me look deeper into what history has to say this and how God has preserved history so that no one can change it. And it's unchangeable. And it's a written fact. It's archive. It's May 1933, and all across Germany, students at universities are carrying out a series of book burnings that target people with a quote-unquote un-German spirit. At these book burnings, the works of men like Freud, Einstein, Mann, and Eric Remarque, who had written the book All Quiet on the Western Front, are thrown into the fire. The largest of these book burnings occurred in Berlin, where an estimated 40,000 people gathered to hear a speech by propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels. In the speech, he declared that Jewish intellectualism is dead and said that it was the right of the students to quote unquote, clean up the debris of the past. It was this cleaning up of the past that was going to pave the way to a very dark future. Also included in these book burnings was the works of Heinrich Heine, who in 1822 said, where they burn books, they will in the end burn human beings too. For example, like the story of David with Goliath, those things are literal stories that happen in history. And if we believe that to happen, I don't understand how we can go outside, wake up, pray in the morning, oh, we're good Christians, okay, eat my breakfast, go outside, and as soon as I see, like, okay, now I'm standing at a bus stop. Like, you... You're living a system that at the end of the day will not benefit you. A system that is there to blind you to then at the end of the day pull the rug from your feet. And the crazy part is in Ezekiel in this verse right here, God warns us that in those days he's going to send inescapable judgments. Read the whole chapter. And not even Job, Noah, or many of those great men of God in the past, they can't save their children. They can only save themselves. Although in the Old Testament, testament it was me and my house will serve the lord so if the man was serving god your whole house was saved but today it is a literal relationship with christ and you of course god can have mercy on you based on your father or your ancestors who praised him and gave him glory we could learn that from solomon and david and we could learn that from Jesus Christ coming from the line of David. You loving Christ above all things, above your very opinion, above your very need of clothing, above your very need to look good, above your very need to, to be so filled with whatever the world thinks we need, you could be investing so much into your bloodline. So seeing in the Bible that God will leave people, a few sons and daughters, and these are the elect, Okay, God has given me visions where, and it's probably not a like a good thing to expose because then like people know, but it, it'll be known anyway. He's shown me that in the end days where we won't be able to have homes, places to gather, or even speak our, our, our faith, our belief in Christ. The elect are, many of them are gonna have to sleep in trees. You know what I mean? Because there will be literally nowhere to sleep. And if you sleep on the ground or on a bench, you'll be arrested because you are a Christian. And it's given me the ability to see why trees are even formed the way they are. Back in the day, we hear about giants, we hear about this, and it's honestly, today we don't see how much it covers us from just the heights. We like to see the sun, we like to see the thing, but that's because we're not in need to survive. Like we are our own predators. We're killing ourselves with nukes and everything, with mental illnesses with yoking ourselves to systems, like I said. I only saw really two people only, only two people sleeping in the trees that they were traveling city to city, warning people about a huge destruction coming in. Groups of people though, they actually lived underground. Like 
I, I actually saw a vision where houses would be abandoned, right? And it's because of like things like earthquakes. So the ground would be split. Nothing would actually be able to be reconstructed by humans anymore. Like literally reality will break, okay? The cities you thought once impenetrable, they're nothing. <laughs> like literally nothing. So people will find underground places where they themselves will start digging in homes where people will look and say, no, that's rubble. There's nothing in there. To be living under that, that's like gonna collapse any second. It's like places like that where the people of God are gonna have to live in order to fellowship and pretty much continue surviving in the days of tribulation. Because there will be some people that, got, like there's tasks God has for everybody. There's people that are born literally to pray. You praying is the best thing because your prayers do a lot. It's like adding salt to this earth, bro. You know what I mean? It's like adding salt to this dying world. And if you want to understand that, just go look at the mummification process, of the Egyptian days, right? Salt really preserved the meat from broadening and completely just decaying and this is what your prayers and our faith in christ jesus does all right so now why am i in a garage right guys i'm in a garage because christians are not christians like if christians we were truly christians and we were out there not needing a car to travel because we're we're walking in groups even fellowshipping rejoicing in the lord getting persecuted while at the same time witnessing the miracles and wonders of the Lord. I wouldn't need to be in a garage, right? I wouldn't need to be in a home. I wouldn't need to be in a system. I wouldn't need to be under the, the approval of, of an employer who only sees my qualifications as something given by the government other than the will placed in me by God. So I endure this pain and poverty and all this thing, even though if you guys want a, a, a resemblance, if you look at Shameless, the show Shameless, I was lip, but I'm no genius. I'm just, I don't know, God opens doors, open doors, you know what I mean? The thing is, when it's the world saying, no, you can't have these doors unless you go through our process, which is something the church is now taking on to their own as their doctrine, saying, if you don't take our discipleship course, you're not a part of this church, practically. When in reality, it's repent. You know what I mean? It's simply repent, carry your cross, and follow Christ. So, I'm in this garage waiting for the people of God to start to finally wake up and realize, like, what are we doing? Literally thinking of, oh, okay, what am I going to eat for dinner? Why are you thinking of that? Are you a heathen? Are you a heathen? I want you to actually answer that. Why do you care about what you wear tomorrow? Like in reality, we care about the most useless things ever. And that's why so many people are dying. And the people that are striving are the people with money and blind hearts. I, I just don't understand that. So if you call yourself a Christian and you're living your life normally like every other heathen, I want you to really, really test your Christianity. I want you to test who is Christ to you. Because he had nowhere to lay his head. I at least have a garage. You get what I mean? Like there's homeless people dying out there. I met a homeless one named George in Brampton. If you see this, bro, contact me. I miss you, man. God bless you and I hope you are safe. Like I wish I could be there out with you, but I, I was a coward. I couldn't be homeless. I didn't know what that was. I can't understand living off of just faith. And that's why I'm still even here in this garage. I'm waiting for the Lord to wake up his people so that when I go out to the streets and find the people, like it says in the book, go to the streets, go to the old paths and ask for the, for the, you'll read it right there. So with that not being a thing anymore, and if it is, it's so rare and, and it's so censored that that is why I'm here in the garage. Otherwise I would be out there probably with a community that does exist somewhere that's just walking city to city, explaining the wonders of God and doing amazing things in the name of Jesus. But honestly, I cannot be a part of the Christians that wear the cloak, like the cloak of Jesus' grace and sit at the table of demons. Like while you're feeding like child predators with your taxes, like it's so crazy, man. Like I'm okay to go to jail if I don't pay taxes, if I don't pay anything, because at the end of the day, bro, someone there has to hear the word of God. Wherever I go, God wants me there. So I'm here waiting on God. Where are the Christians, yo?